fantastic to talk about the company you're working for like this. It's fantastic to frame your job like this. I'm a businesswoman. I had a really clear job to do when yeah. I took over Bud Light. And it was... I'm, I'm going to stop right here. Can you imagine? She said, when I took over Anheuser-Busch, not when, when we started working together, not when I, when I got the job to work with Anheuser-Busch, when I took it over. I'm a businesswoman. I had a really clear job to do when yeah. I took over Bud Light. I had a clear job to do when I took it over. And Possession. Control. It was, this brand is in decline. It's been in decline for a really long time. Can you, how did this, how did this job interview go? Look at Hazza Bush, your, your company, sh you're, you're going down the sh and you need to shake it up or you're going to, you're going to end up a, a crappy company that has been Anheuser Bush. Unless they came to her and they said, look, our company, sh we're losing sales, turn it around. But can you imagine publicly talking about the company that you're working for like this? Like if this were the discussion they had in the hiring process, it's certainly should not be the public discussion to say, we have crappy product that nobody seems to like. So instead of revamping the product, let's, let's just rebrand. Let's do something kitschy to, to, to get some attention instead of improving the actual quality of the, of the product. I'm thinking now of billions. I just started watching billions with those little Twinkie things. Look, uh, we're, we're losing market share. We need to fix this. Let me go public and say how badly the company has been doing. And if we do not attract young drinkers to come and drink this brand, there will be no future for Bud Light. So I had this super clear mandate. It's like, mm -hmm. we need to evolve and elevate this incredibly iconic brand. And my, what I brought to that was a belief in, okay, what is, what, do, what does evolve and elevate mean? It means inclusivity. It means shifting the tone. It means having a campaign that's truly inclusive and feels lighter and brighter and different and appeals to women and to men mm -hmm. and represent appeals to women and to men. And how about if your shtick appeals to neither? It, it, can you believe she said she's saying this as though Dylan Mulvaney partnering up with Bud Light appeals to both women and men. Uh, I'll say this with the utmost of respect for anybody who thinks differently. It appeals to neither who it appeals to are ideologues who think that elevation oh, has something to do with inclusivity and that inclusivity has something to do with biological men taking the, <laughs> taking the roles of, 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 of women, of men taking the positions of women. Presentation is at sort of the heart of evolution. You've got to see people who reflect you in the work. And we had this hangover. I mean, Bud Light had been kind of a brand of... Oh, it's an old... It's an old white boy brand. No, Bud Light had been the fun Bud. Well, maybe that's Budweiser. It had been something of, of its own, of an all-inclusive in that. I mean, I judge people who drink Bud Light in general, but it was all-inclusive because nobody was ever focusing on identity to sell or buy Bud Light. It's not inclusive when you make it about identity. Then it is, by definition, exclusionary. Fratty kind of out of touch humor and it was of really important humor. that we had another approach so i um we'll see how this pans out but the, the the wonderful framing of it all hey let me go and publicly dump on the company that i'm working for let me set up a situation in which i literally cannot lose because the company was in steep decline anyhow. So if my gag of a thing actually pushes people away and kills the company, it was going to die anyhow. It's not my fault. I tried. If the company is not in decline, as she says, or as they might have said to her when trying to, you know, get her eager and excited to work for the company, uh, then she can take credit for it. Tim Pool pointed out, if, you, if you're into the whole boycott thing, uh, there's a lot of companies at Anheuser-Busch, a lot of products that they make above and beyond Bud Light. Uh, but I just happen to be a a, a fan of good beer. The only problem is they're all getting bought up by like multinational conglomerates. Even we, we used to have a beer in Quebec called, it was called Uni, what well, was Unibrew. They used to make a beer called Mozit, which meant uh, damned, cursed in French. Fin du monde, which meant the end of the world. Uh, they had blasphème, which is blasphemer. It, the, the entire beer was built around, um, you know, like, like unholiness. And it was like 8% to 12%. It's good beer. Don't have too many of them. It's quite heavy and we'll, leave you feeling bad next morning. They all get bought out. And the, all of your all of these products, you have no idea the overarching company that owns them. It's not the company that you think it is.